HMA should be heated in a 230 degree oven until workable. Reduce HMA using Ashto R47 and dry to a constant mass using Ashto T329. Record the weight of the basket assembly. Remove the lid and the top basket. Evenly distribute half of the HMA sample in the bottom basket. Using a spatula or a trowel, pull the HMA away from the edges. Place the top basket back onto the assembly. Evenly distribute and level the rest of the HMA sample and pull the HMA away from the sides. Place the lid on the basket assembly. Record the weight of the sample and basket assembly. To calculate the initial dry sample mass, subtract the basket weight from the basket and sample weight. Two numbers can be entered into the NCAT oven, weight of the initial sample and your correction factor or calibration factor from the mixed design or determined in the correction factor procedure. To enter the initial weight, press the Weight button, followed by the initial sample weight, then press the Enter button. To enter the correction factor, press the Calibrate Factor button, followed by the correction factor, then press the Enter button. To check that the initial weight and correction factor has been entered correctly, press each button again and check the display to ensure it matches. To zero the internal balance, press the zero button and check to make sure the display reads zero. Now verify the oven temperature reads 538 degrees Celsius or 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, open the oven door and carefully place the basket assembly so that it's not touching the sides of the oven. Check the balance display to verify that it's within plus or minus 5 grams from what was recorded on the external balance. Now press the Start Stop button. This will lock the chamber door and start the combustion blower. Leave the sample in the NCAT oven until the alarm sounds. This will happen after a change in mass does not exceed 0.01% after three consecutive minutes. Press the Start Stop button to unlock the chamber door and cause the printer to print the test results. Remove the sample basket assembly and place on a cooling plate. Put a protective cage over the sample basket assembly and allow it to cool to room temperature, approximately 30 minutes. Once cooled to room temperature, record the after ignition weight. Empty the contents of the basket into a pan using a small wire brush. Ensure all fines are removed. Record the after ignition weight of just the sample. This weight should agree with the weight of the sample basket assembly after ignition minus the basket assembly within a tenth of a percent. The sample will now be used to perform a gradation analysis per AASHTO T30. Please refer to that standard to continue the testing process. 
Calculations for method A using the printed ticket. In the formula, the PB stands for the corrected asphalt binder content of the HMA. The BC stands for the asphalt binder shown on the printed ticket from the NCAT. The MC stands for the moisture content determined per AASHTO T329. This will not apply if the sample was dried to a constant mass before ignition. The CF stands for the asphalt binder correction factor, which is taken from the mix design or is determined in the correction factor procedure later discussed in this video. This is an example of a printed ticket from the NCAT oven. This ignition burn came out to a 5.07% oil, referred to as the BC in the corrected asphalt binder equation. This ticket also shows that a calibration factor, or the correction factor, of 0.25% has been entered, which is the CF in the corrected asphalt binder equation. Since the correction factor has already been entered into the NCAT oven, we can leave that step out of the formula. So now the formula will look like this. We will take the percent oil that's shown on the ticket and we'll subtract out our moisture content. Here's an example. If we take our BC of 5.07% that we get from the printed ticket and we subtract our MC of 0.02%, which was our moisture content determined by ASHTO T329, we come up with a corrected asphalt binder content of 5.05%. Now we're going to discuss method B with an external balance. In this procedure, the NCAT oven does not have an internal balance or printer. For the method B procedure, the same steps will be performed from method A on weighing and recording the basket assembly empty, then placing the HMA in the basket assembly and recording the total weight. If you subtract these two weights, you will know how much just the sample weighs before ignition. Then place the HMA and basket assembly in the NCAT and burn for 45 minutes. Remove the HMA and basket assembly and place on a cooling plate and cover with a protective cage. Let the sample cool to room temperature, approximately 30 minutes, and record the weight of the HMA and basket assembly. Now place the HMA and basket assembly back in the NCAT oven. Leave the HMA in the oven for 15 minutes once the temperature reaches 1000 degrees on the display. Again, remove the HMA and basket assembly and place on a cooling plate and cover with a protective cage until the sample is room temperature, approximately 30 minutes, and record the weight. Repeat the process of burning the HMA for 15 minutes, then cooling for 30 minutes until the change in mass does not exceed a tenth of a percent. Then calculate the corrected asphalt binder. Now we'll talk about correction factors. There are two correction factors that can be applied to the calculations in T308. The asphalt binder correction factor and an aggregate correction factor. The asphalt binder correction factor can be determined by comparing the ignition burns of two identical HMA samples. If the two identical HMA samples had 5% oil, and the ignition results showed an average of 5.2% oil, then a 0.2% correction would need to be applied on every sample burned. If an asphalt correction factor is greater than 1%, the NCAT oven temperature needs to be lowered to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. A correction factor for each NCAT oven needs to be established. An aggregate correction factor can be determined by comparing identical gradation samples that have been in the NCAT oven to a gradation sample that has not been exposed to the high temperatures. Each sieve size will be compared to see where there could potentially be excessive breakdown. An aggregate correction factor will need to be applied to any sieve with an excessive amount of breakdown when production paving.